What's going on, YouTube? Crazy dogs. So, my name is Jason, and this is my crazy dog Roo. Sorry, I'm walking. And my 1994 Toyota Seabreeze. She's my baby. Um, I've had it over a year. I actually lived full time in this for seven months while I was looking for this beautiful farm that I currently live on in Oceanside, California, that we are in the process of rehabbing for our chili pepper business. I make hot sauce for a living. Here and or there, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of uh, how this thing came to be. So um, my business and another's merged and I had to scramble uh, and move from a apartment I thought I would never leave in Los Angeles to come down here in Oceanside, but I did not want to just rehome myself. I actually wanted to find the place um, for the business. Um, so anyway, long story short, I've been looking for one of these half-ass for, I don't know, a couple years, and then literally the week that I needed to move, I found this beast um, from a family up in the central coast of California. Um, they kind of just used it for their son when he came down to visit, so it just sat. Uh, it's pretty good sh it was in pretty good shape when I got it, uh, well, externally, should I say. Um, uh, motor ran pretty well. Got all the normal issues of you know these series. It's got the it's got the three liter in it. Uh, so it does have the V6, but pff, I mean that just means you're you're jogging up the hill instead of walking up the hill. Um, but you know anybody that knows these vehicles know that's just part of it. You just you ain't racing anybody in it. Um, but everything worked. Uh, it was completely movable, um, with the exception of a couple shower repairs. Um, Everything worked, hot water heater, all the pumps, uh, no pro new issues with tanks. Um, so yeah, it was a move-in ready RV that me and these two little monsters lived in for, um, like I said, seven months. So as you can see by that white pile right there, anybody knows the inside of these things knows that uh, National built them with a two layer foam um, with this weird epoxy wood. Uh, it was a really shitty design uh, because once it leaked, it was glued to the fiberglass and you can't really replace that. So you have to kind of go in and scrape it off. So that said, um, now that we've been on the farm for a couple months now, I've decided to really start the actual process. Hi, that's me. Um, I'm a couple days into the teardown already and I keep just getting deeper and deeper, deeper into this thing. And I realize now that I'm going to gut the whole thing. Um, maybe. Uh, so here we are already into it. Uh, the back, obviously the, the gentleman I bought it from, he had to uh, register it as a, um, salvage because that corner had an, he hit a, uh, a gas station, the little pole thing for the gas station pump and it kind of tore up that back end. So I knew it was going to get into some water damage back there. I did not think it was going to be this bad. And again, this is me significantly tearing into all of the rotten shit. So, um, yeah, it's actually not that bad. I hit some huge pocket of black mold up there yesterday and it freaked me out. So I stopped. I'm going to go get some masks today to get more into the shower. So when I moved in, there was a huge hole here and a huge hole in that corner. And there wasn't one up there, so that surprised me. Um, I figured the floor would be way more rotten underneath here than it was, and it actually wasn't at all. I think what was happening was it was trickling down that side underneath of what used to be that horrible sink, pink sink that was 17 times bigger than it needed to be. And then it just all ended up behind the commode back there in some weird pocket that you couldn't see. So, um, as I have, again, unearthed the floor, back yonder I'm gonna rip this whole thing up because it's rotten underneath the refrigerator and I didn't really want to get past this frame but the floor joist that for these this sheet of plywood is literally that's the that's the, that's the level right there you can kind of see on the floor right here that little bump right there that's where I need to cut back so that said, this is that weird foam epoxy stuff. 
So it's glued, man. Like, what the hell are you supposed to do with that? So, I don't know. I'm gonna chip it apart. Um, I have repaired a gabillion surfboards in my day and I've gotten really good at fiberglass boat repair. So I'm gonna take a stab at repairing all of this to keep it OG. I think I can do a pretty good job of it. There is a weird buckle where that tire used to be. I'm gonna not replace that tire back there. I'm gonna put it on the roof because I'm gonna, now that I'm down to the frame, I'm gonna make a, a rack out of the back of these, which was one of the design flaws I never liked that you can't step, like there's a fake step bumper back there. It's just plastic and you can't put any weight on it. So I'm gonna reinforce that with a piece of aluminum underneath and make a some sort of railing on the outside of that so I can put the tire and maybe, I don't know, I got a couple ideas. I'm thinking about punching through this wall and putting a outside shower system in, sink system in for an outside kitchen setup. Uh, that'll double as an outside shower with a um, solar, one of those black solar tubes on the top. Um, but I got a couple ideas. So the shower wall still here, still in good intact. Um, that surprisingly is really not bad. Uh, it's dark yesterday because all the uh, water from these pipes when I cut just leaked down in there. It was actually bone ash dry. So I was really surprised by that. Um, and then structurally all of the original wood from um, National is still decent. I mean, this is, this is the actual connection to the frame. So, uh, yeah. So I've got my work cut out for me back here. I'm gonna do what I've been doing here and just hand really delicately go get a mask, but take all of this old fiberglass or whatever that stuff, foam, and I'm gonna re-foam it with the spray foam, which I'm not looking forward to because that is a messy, nasty, disgusting, sticky mess. Um, this guy is gone. I'm going to replace that with a huge skylight in the bathroom and put this where the shower, in the shower to give me a little bit more headroom in the shower. Okay, so, the cab. Don't know. We're gonna come back and do another video about the cab, but the, my thought process right now, obviously backsplash, this works great, this works great. Um, it just needs some TLC. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have the commode thing sitting on the stove, but don't really matter, I guess. Um, so a lot of salvageable things that just need some some love. This just needs to be refurnished. Um, this for fridge works great. Just needs to be refurnished. Uh, what I'm thinking with the fridge is foregoing this, taking the fridge ceiling face height so it's there, and then I'm gonna use basically take the top drawers and put them down so that everything's stacked up. Um, I just never found myself using those. The the beauty of this is I've already lived in this bad boy, so I know. I know what's functional, what I like, what I don't. Um, the cabinets are gonna stay. I'm gonna take them all off and refinish everything. I took those horrible window sconces off. Um, I gotta... Curtains work and they're expensive, so I don't think I'm gonna toss them. They, again, just need to be taken down and cleaned the crap out of. I do have a couple small issues with the wall, so I need to track down where the water's coming in. Um, the cab is completely perfect. There's nothing wrong with the cab. That window is questionable. But man, if I take that window out, we're opening a whole huge can of worms because it's really hard to get to uh, without stepping on the hood. So um, thinking skylight, thinking about taking this bad boy out and putting the skylight in because this is broken. So I need to replace it anyway. So I don't know. Um, sorry, which was this whole setup here. All these cabinets are gonna stay, gonna get refinished. Um, this horrible, anything pink's gone. Uh, and then this couch. So what I'm thinking with this couch, I like that setup. I found myself sitting there and my older dog Shorty loved that. So that's, that was his jam. So I'm going to leave that. This couch sucks. It's just, it's cool when there's, when there's people in here, but I mean, the amount of times that there's enough people to justify this big ass couch in here, I, I wouldn't put anybody's sleep on it. Um... It's just not comfortable. So I'm thinking gone. And what I'm thinking is making a, a bar that comes out enough to cover up the electrical system. So like a breakfast bar kind of deal that doubles for a workspace. And then there used to be a captain's chair here um, that I took out. You can actually see where the, the, the frame for the thing was. 
I'm gonna make a desk. So I'm gonna close half of this off. Or maybe all, maybe I might even frame in that whole cab just so that you can't even see the front. So when I'm in park, you, it's just a whole, whole, you know, not curtains closed. It'll just be like a little teeny tiny home. And then I'm going to make a work desk there um, with a, my, I'm going to put a, a Mac, um, Mac screen in that's on a swivel. So when I'm laying in bed, I can look at it and when it, it'll, it'll raise and lower and swivel. Um. I actually had a, uh, I have an idea for that, but yeah, so it's gonna be a little work desk there. And, um, yeah, everything else works great. It does not have the generator. I do want to get a propane generator for it, um, because the AC kicks ass and I want to be able to use that thing. Uh, the heater is great. It does. The fan shroud starts to squeak a little bit when it first starts on, uh, turns on until it warms up. But that's pretty normal for that bearing. It just needs to be replaced. Um, what else? Carpet everywhere. Everybody that has these knows there's just so much horrible carpet in these things. It's like, kind of scares me a little bit because of, I don't know, like 93. Were we really worried about asbestos that much back then? So it's all propane i mean plastic base gnarly carpet i cleaned the crap out of it but and then this bed situation i it's pretty macked out right now i have about a, if there's a queen on there now it's a little dirty just because i didn't have the um stupid me didn't have the curtain closed when i was doing construction yesterday but um it's stupid comfortable there uh that's a queen with a down uh, feather throw on it uh so the, for now the cab's gonna be the last thing I worry about, um, with the exception of getting rid of those horrible pink curtains, which thankfully from the outside are sun stains. You can't tell that they're pink. Um, and same with these seats. I stopped by an upholstery shop the other day and got in a quote, and then the guy was like, man, you're close enough to Chula Vista. Why don't you just go down there and just go get some leather joints, replace those with leather, because he's like, they got armrests and stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got in the car and started driving. And it was like 85 that day. And then that truck, my Tacoma, um, which has cloth, I was sweating to death. And so I was like, man, leather with this thing, no AC. Anytime I drive it on trips, there's no AC pumping. So I might reinvest, reinvestigate the um, reupholstering. But the color scheme is definitely gonna be cobalt blue. It's my favorite color. So I'm thinking like a white ash, faux floor, cobalt blue, white, off white, maybe eggshell white, the whole area. Um, the, cabinets i'm gonna do a different color um just really brighten this this bad boy up and then that'll have a whole different feel to it back there with the cabinetry going all with the refrigerator going all the way up so that'll be a different vibe back there or i leave that the way it is and put the microwave because this does not have a microwave <laughs> future full-timers you need a toaster, you need a microwave, you need a coffee maker. Those three things, there's no other things you need, you cannot do without, and water. And one advice that a full-timer gave me the first... So what I was doing was I was I was boondocking in my business partner's front yard. And then once a week I would go stay at a campground and dump tanks. And, you know, just really have a full night of just not caring how much water I used or whatever. But I was living on, you know, whatever's... In this bad boy is the stock 93 tank levels i don't even know how much they are um, but i was doing a week of that uh but anyway this old guy kept up on me one day and he was like hey he's like you living in that thing i'm like yep he's like all right two pieces of advice he's like one never ever uh don't take advantage of somebody offering you to use their restroom or a restroom or a restroom in general, <laughs> number one. Number two, same thing. Never don't take advantage of getting some free water. <laughs> so uh, that's words to live by right there. Um, so yeah. I've seen a couple of videos of, of cats doing van conversions and stuff that don't have restrooms. Man, I'll tell you something. A couple of you people are like, yeah, we don't need them. Guess what? That's because you just didn't know that you what it was like to have one. I completely subscribe to getting a restroom. If you're gonna live off and you're gonna full-time it, man, 
there are just some times where you just don't have a place to go to the bathroom. So, can't say enough about one. So, there she is. This is my beast. I'm gonna do a full video of this bad boy as she comes around. Those lights have got to go up top. Oh my God, it's killing me. It's like a, it's like a, I don't know. It just has a drive-through, like a Burger King drive-through vibe that I'm not digging. Uh, what else? Before I close out, those wheels are pretty tight. It's got the stock like pimp wheels on it. I kind of want to put some wire wheels on it because I've been looking at, <laughs> oh yeah, lowered RVs. Because I'm never getting rid of this thing. Uh, so I'm gonna pimp it out J style. Do it right. Uh, it's already got stock airbags. The 93s are 93s and 4s came with the stock airbag suspension. I don't have the leveler off that for some reason the 93s had, which I wish I did, because it's just a it's just a little screw situation. But um, there she is. She's in great shape. A couple of small aesthetic things like there's a little hole right there needs to be fixed. Somebody tried to fix and paint that it's horrible um there's been love on this thing but another fixer but whoever's loving on it just really didn't they just really half-assed it so like all of the caulking needs to be redone just normal stuff for a 24 year old vehicle all right video one